Hey guys, so in this video we're going to be customizing the Blaze template. Um, now this is a great choice for agencies, it's a great choice for startups as well. It's a very flexible template with a lot of different sections. In, in this video I'm basically going to show you how you can customize the specific parts of this template. However, if you're brand new to Framer, I would highly recommend for you to watch our Framer Basics tutorial. You will find the link to it in the description. And in that video, you will uh, basically get walked through all of the Framer Basics, how you can change text, images, navigate around Framer, and so on. Uh, but with that out of the way, let's get started with customizing the Blaze template. Okay, so first things first, uh, if you want to change the navigation, uh, this is how you can do that. You basically hover over the navigation component, double click it, and then from here you will see uh, the component settings. Let me just move this out of the way. Um, and from here you can click the logo, uh, go to the right side, scroll down, and next to fill, click image, and you can put in your logo here. Um, if it's not sized properly, you can unlock this size uh, property here and then you can resize the logo however you want it to look like. Um, and then for the links, if you, let's say for example, want to remove the home link, you can click on it, go to the right side and make it uh, not visible, just like that. Um, and then to change the links for the get template button, for example, you can click it and then next to link, you can put your own link here. Um, and this is how you change uh, the links on the button for the navigation link. It's a similar process. You just change it from up here. Um, so this is how you customize the navigation. Then another specific thing for this template are those little uh, floating cards that you see on the desktop. And how you can change the actual information here is if you zoom in and you double click on the text, you can put in anything you like here and customize it to fit uh, your specific services or your specific platform. Um, if, for example, you don't want those to show up at all, you can just go to the Layer tab and select the Metric Highlight and then from here just make it not visible. Um, and this is how you can hide those. Um, but I'll just bring it back. There we go. Um, another thing that you can customize are those little icons in the services that are listed in the Hero section. Uh, you can just select them and then on the right side uh, you have this material tab where you can either pick from a list of icons or search for something specific. Um, and then to change the link for these cards you can click on the service layer itself with this little icon that signifies that uh, this is actually a link. And then you can go here in the top right and just change the link from here. Um, and I'll just leave it like this. Uh, then for the client logos, uh, you can just simply drag in your logo. Let's say that we want to add this one. Um, if you drag it in like that, most likely it will not be sized appropriately. So what you have to do is just click on it um, and then go here in the top right corner and size this down. You can hold down shift as well uh, to make sure you keep the proportions and then just position it next to the other logos. Select this uh, purple uh, ticker component. Uh, click those three dots and connect it with the new logo we just added. If we preview this, you will see that now we have this new logo um, in our site. Then to change the content in the case studies, uh, you would actually have to change them from the CMS uh, collection. So from here you can see your case studies and change the information. But for example, if let's say uh, you don't want to have these statistics, you can click on them and then just uh, hide them with this button and this will remove them from all of those case studies. Um, if you want to add, let's say, another, another description, you can add it and then you can put some content here. Let's say this says uh, description and it has these uh, dots. You can do that if you want to. Um, and yeah, this is pretty much how you can uh, edit this. To edit the gradient in the background that you see, you need to obviously select the background. And then here next to fill, you can change the colors, you can change the gradient positioning, you can make it uh, like a linear gradient, you can make it a solid color. You really have a lot of options to choose from. Um, and I'm just gonna do this for the purpose of the video. I'll just lighten this color up a bit. And this is what we've got. 
Um, then for the testimonials, it's pretty simple. You just change the text, change the, the name and change the image. And this is how you can customize them to add more. Simply select one of them and click Control or Command D. And this will add more testimonials. If you want to hide some of them, you can either select it and click Delete or go to the right side and make it uh, not visible from here. I'll just delete it because we don't need it. Um, now for these uh, counter widgets, you simply select the counter, go to the right side and from here you have quite a few settings. You have font, font size, color, start number and end number. Now for the start and end number, I wouldn't recommend for you to go um, anything above 300 between the difference between the two because that would take a lot uh, to actually uh, see the animation play out in the live site. So 300 would be the max um, max ratio that you have to keep between those counters. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it when it comes to managing this. Uh, then we have the pricing section, which is very simple. You simply uh, just select the text, adjust it, select the button, adjust the links and so on. Um, if you want to, let's say, add more features, you can select the whole feature box, not just the text or not just the icon, just the whole feature box. Then you can click Control or Command D as many times as you want. If you want to hide features, same thing, select it and make it not visible. We also have this optional add-ons component where um, if you don't need it, you can simply hide it. Uh, but if you need it and you have some optional add-ons, you can customize it with these two fields here. We have question, which is basically uh, the title goes here. And then we have the answer. Um, let me show you the answer, what it looks like. The answer is basically the placeholder add-ons. Um, so that's how you can manage this. Um, FAQ, pretty simple, double click on the widget, select the question, and then we have the same principle. You can customize the text here. If you want to customize the look of the FAQ, you can double click. And then from here, you can customize the um, primary, the closed primary variant, the background color, the borders, the shadows, etc., and also the open variant as well. So this is how you can do that. And then for the footer, you can double click it. And then here we also have this overlay image. So if you select the background, you will see that we have first the final CTA layer, which is the, just a dark fill. Then we have the image overlay, which is this uh, little gradient effect that really adds to the template. Um, and then only then do we have the text wrapper. Uh, if you don't want this image overlay, you can just simply remove it. Um, you can exit out, you can add a different image. And uh, if you buy the template, you will also receive a link to the Figma file. And in that Figma file, you will find those little gradients and images. Uh, you can simply change the colors there in Figma, export them as JPEG or SVG, um, and then import uh, them here. Um, and then also for the footer here, I would recommend for you to remove the 404 page because this is uh, just for the purpose of showing that this template has a 404, but we don't need to show it in the live website. For the social media, you can click on it and you can put your link here. If uh, let's say you want to add more social medias, you can duplicate one of those. And here, let's say we want to add YouTube. You can just type in YouTube and this will change the icon and uh, you can paste your YouTube link here. And uh, here you could put your contact inf info if you need it, like uh, office address, email address, phone number, etc. But if you do not need this column, again, you can simply make it not visible and uh, you will see this. Now, once you do that, uh, what's very important to do is select the grid and adjust the columns from four to three, uh, simply because this will make it uh, look a bit nicer. Um, and yeah, so this is how you customize the footer. Uh, now, the Blaze template has, uh, you know, a few more pages. We have services. Now, the principles that we just saw with the customization apply everywhere here. Um, so, yeah, you can do the same things on all of the pages. Uh, one important thing for the collection, this is where we have our blogs, our case studies, actually, in this case. Um, we have this regular setup, but uh, if you want to adjust this, again, you, we use the same principles. We just plug the content <coughs> here from the actual CMS uh, case study. <coughs> so this pretty much concludes the, the tutorial. Oh, 
one last thing um, to make this form work and to make it send emails to your email you need to create a form spark account and once you do that you need to create a form then all you have to do is just grab the form id and you paste it right here and this should uh, connect this form with your own form spark account and then uh, when people fill out this form form you will receive the submissions in your email address um, so this is how uh, this works and I think this pretty much concludes the tutorial for customizing blaze I hope this video was helpful for you guys if any questions come up you can always hit us up uh, via our website um, and yeah we would be more than happy to help you thank you for watching